Hey, what's happening, Nation? It's Joe Q. I wanted to make a quick video tonight and just talk about my top breakout players for this upcoming season. And I'm not talking about the superstars that we know we have on this roster already. I'm talking about those supporting cast dudes that are going to end up taking that next step or turning that corner and really pushing this team from a good team to a championship caliber team. You have to have that. And regardless of how we feel about this 53-man roster shaking out, these dudes work their asses off and they earn their spots on this roster. And I think we have a few guys on this team right now that are poised to take that next step and enter into that level of greatness that we truly need. But I do not have a lot of time tonight, so I am going to jump straight into this. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts and who you think is going to be these players. But as far as my list goes, we're going to start off in that wide receiver room, and it's either going to be DJ Turner or Matt Collins. One of those dudes is going to reap the freaking benefits of having so many superstars on this offensive side of the ball. You'll have to understand, you have to double-team Devontae or Waller on any given play. Then you still have Renfro's ass running around like a crazy man and Josh Jacobs coming out of the backfield. Our number two wide receiver is going to be singled up in one-on-one -on -one coverage on almost every single play. Whichever one of those two guys can capitalize on that shit is going to have a crazy good season this year. I'm honestly not 100% sure of who it's going to be, but if I had to put money on it right now, my bet would go towards DJ Turner. But do not sleep on Mac Hollins. Either one of those dudes has the potential to step up and really claim that number two spot and not look back. Next up on the list is Foster Moreau, and I know I'm going to catch a little shit because I put him on my list every single year, but you have to understand, two years ago, that dude had one of the grossest leg injuries I've ever seen. And last season, his ass was not completely healthy. This year, he is fully back, he is ready, and I am telling you right now that dude is going to be a big part of this offense. Whether it be in the blocking game or in the run game or just going on those little flare routes, that dude's another one that's going to be singled up on every single play. And he can catch and he can make some big ass plays. Do not forget that Foster is on this team because I am telling you that dude is destined for freaking greatness and I was happy as shit to see him back on this 53. And then for my final player on the offensive side, I'm talking about Amir Abdullah. I know there's a ton of people talking up Britton Brown and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. And I like that kid, man. I really do. He's a big body back and I think there is space for him in this offense, but I think he's going to be extremely limited this season. Abdullah, on the other hand, went out there and won this spot over Kenyon Drake. And I'm telling you, they play a very similar game. Now, don't get me wrong, I was pissed when Drake ended up getting cut off this team in favor of Abdullah, but at the same time, he earned that shit. He went out there and played harder, looked better in practice, was willing to put in the work when Kenyon Drake was not. I'm telling y'all, he is going to be a big part of this offense. We kept him for a reason. And I'm not sitting here saying that he's going to end up going to the Pro Bowl and his stat line is going to blow you out of the freaking water. All I'm saying is that kid's going to be a valued piece to this offense that's jacked full of weapons right now because he's going to have one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And he understands that and he's going to exploit the shit out of that. All right, and then moving over to the defensive side of the ball, where I know I'm going to catch a ton of shit for this, but it's not going to be with this first player. But I have talked about him in my previous videos. Luke Masterson is going to be huge on this defensive side of the ball. Granted, it's going to be a lot of special teams, but you put that kid in the open field, he's a playmaker. He's fast as shit, and he makes things happen when he is on the field. I was so damn stoked when we brought him onto this team, and then the fact that he made the 53 and not the practice squad just proved to me everything I needed to know about him. Keep a close ass eye on this kid. He's going to be special. I'll have no idea how much I freaking love this linebacker room. And then my final three defensive players are all on the defensive line. And in today's NFL, you have to have a solid ass defensive line rotation or teams are going to end up just bull rushing straight through you. But we have three players that are on this defensive line to support our starters and be those rotational pieces that you have to have on a week to week basis. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the one that I know I'm going to take the most shit for. But this kid worked his ass off. He made that 53 and you know that I love his ass and it is Clee Farrell. And regardless of all the bullshit and all the clickbait that you watch through the offseason, this kid put in the work and he's stuck on this roster. And yes, I will agree with you. We overreached and we drafted his ass way, way too early. We probably would have been able to snag him in the second. That is what it is. You can't go back in time. You can't change that shit. And that is not Clee's fault. That is our management's fault. 
but that kid is hungry as hell and right now I guarantee you he has a chip on his shoulder. Sometimes it takes a few years to adjust to the NFL. Some players you're willing to wait for it and other players you're willing to just kind of shit on completely. And when they're a first round pick, you're willing to do that a hell of a lot faster than you normally would. You need to give this kid his opportunity. He's been getting better and better every damn season. He's been going through coaching changes. He's seen this thing turn over more than a few different times now. But I guarantee you Patrick Graham's going to have his ass dialed in and when he rotates either to the inside or the outside, even though me personally would rather see him play on the inside, the kid is going to eat this season. Next up on that defensive line, it's Malcolm Koontz. That kid is always so damn close but never finishes. It drives me insane. But it seems like through this preseason and through camp, he's really kind of taken a step forward. I really like what I've seen from this kid so far. And I honestly think you're going to end up seeing him on the field more than you're expecting to this season. I'm expecting pretty big things out of him. I'm not expecting anything crazy. I'm not going to say he's going to, he's going to come out there and get 10 sacks this season. He's going to be freaking insane. But I'm going to say he's going to end up getting one or two and a few tackles for a loss. And I really think that this kid could end up sticking on this roster for a good damn minute. And then finish it up with my final players. And if you follow my channel and you've been with me for a while, you already know exactly what name I'm going to say. It's Kendall Vickers. I am so happy his ass made this team. He never should have been on anybody's practice squad. He should have been a part of our defensive line rotation since the day one that his ass came onto this team. I know how good he freaking is. That kid is a fucking animal. If you have any doubts about it, just go back and watch any game where we play Kansas City and he's in it. The dude just ruins them. And now that he's getting a legitimate shot to be on the starting 53-man roster, out of everybody that I have mentioned tonight and put onto my list, he is going to be the one that will end up having the best stat line per his position. He is a true hidden gem, and I am expecting a brilliant freaking season from him. But that's my list. Be sure to hit me up. Let me know who your breakout players are. The dudes that'll just show up and help take this shit to the next level. I really want to hear from y'all because there's a bunch of dudes that I was going through and I was like, Man, I could put him there, I could put him, but I really just wanted to stick with the guys that I did have. So definitely share your thoughts on that. If you wouldn't mind clicking that like on your way out, it really does help me out. If you haven't subbed up yet, I really would appreciate that. But until next time, I'm Joku. Thank you all very much for checking out another one, and we'll see you all later.